just to share on your behalf, we can do the same. As per your advice. Okay, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine if you open. Okay. Uh Good afternoon all. Before starting the session, I would request to all the participants kindly mute yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kalpana from Turning Association of India. On behalf of TAI, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all for participating in today's virtual training session on hydro tunnel specifics in design and construction organized by Turning Association of India, TAI, and Center of, Center of Excellence for Tunnel Studies, CETS. Tunneling Association of India joined ITA in 1976 by the initiative of Central Board of Irrigation and Power, is the Indian chapter of the International Tunneling and Underground Space Association of India, ITA, 
a non-profit and non-government organization registered under Societies Registration Act 1860 in the year 1991 with the mission to encourage the use of the surf surface for the benefit of public environment and sustainable development and to promote advances in planning, design, construction, maintenance and safety of tunnels and underground space by bringing together information they own and by studying questions related to their too. I would like to give a brief about the Center of Excellence for Tunnel Studies, CETS. National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation Limited, NHIDCL, is a fully owned corporation of Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, Government of India. NHIDCL has established a Center of Excellence for Tunnel Studies, CETS as a platform for advancement of tunnel development work in India. TI organizing virtual training sessions workshop to disseminate the information about the latest techniques, new trends and experiences gained by the professionals. I'm sure it will enhance the knowledge of tunnel and underground professionals in the country who are developing their career in the field. Today's program on the topic of hydro tunnel specifics in design and construction is a very important topic and will be conducted by the renowned speaker, Dr. Haral Wagner. I guess Mr. Wagner is well known uh, to the underground profession because he has already conducted around uh, nine to 10 virtual programs already for the Tunneling Association of India. Mr. Dr. Haral has more than 40 years of professional experience in tunnel design, construction, and consultancy. He is a former assistant professor at Technical University, Graz in Austria, on soil mechanics and foundation engineering for architects, a vice president of ITA, an expert member of ITA's executive council, who has worked throughout his career as a designer and consultant in more than 35, year, 35 countries around the world. Over to you, sir, Dr. Haral Wagner. You may start the session now. I unmute now. Just a moment. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. You can hear me, but I, I don't have the screen. Now, do it. can you open the screen? The screen, uh, the presentation is visible on the screen, sir. No, it's not. Okay. Just a second, sir. Let me ask. Let Mr. me ask the IT person to assist you. Okay. Uttam, can you please guide Dr. Haral? Mr. Uttam, can you hear me? Uh, if you cannot open the presentation, then uh, maybe I, I start to open the presentation, okay? Can you see the presentation now? Yes, sir, we can. Okay, so then, then I can start. Correct? Uh, no, it's no, again, no. Uh, it's not visible now. Okay. Uh, Wagner, sir, you, uh, you just stop sharing and uh, close your presentation. You can just uh, see this uh, screen. We can share from our end, sir. Okay, I, I closed the presentation here on my screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I close already. Yeah. Now, are you able to see the presentation, sir? No. I don't have the presentation on my screen. Then, uh, sir, could you please rejoin, sir? Just exit and again rejoin. Okay. So then yeah. I, I close and, and yes, open sir. again. Yes, sir. 
Okay, just a moment. Uh, the presentation on my screen, but I have the bar which is covering part of the screen. Maybe twenty percent of the screen is covered. Can can you delete the bar in the middle of the of my screen? It's automatically yeah. removed, sir. It's uh, not from our side. It's uh, from your side all. No. Uh, sir, you not need to touch any equipment we can move uh, further sir so you can just uh, stay it's automatically removed sir no it does not it's automatically sir you no need to just touch keyboard and mouse it's uh, automatically removed sir because we share the presentation and from our end it's uh, perfect sir. now i have the presentation but very small Can you give me full screen? So it's already on a full screen. We can see it clearly. Maybe start the presentation with this little bar itself. Well, <laughs> I have the bar in the middle. Uh, maybe you can you can say so it's give... automatically hide, sir. It's automatically hide, sir. It's a pop-up bar, it's automatically hide. Uh, now it's clear okay yes yeah i start i start the presentation yes okay today we have a very very special uh, issue the very special item to discuss and uh, that is like it is, has been announced the hydro tunnel specifications Hydro tunnels are very important uh, in the development of uh, Indian infrastructure, and uh, therefore we have chosen this uh, this uh, topic today to talk about. So the next slide, the next slide will show the outline of the presentation, and uh, I want just uh, to repeat very briefly. After a bio sketch of the references uh, of the projects which I have uh, served uh, in the course of my professional career, I will give you a forward and then talk about frame title projects, about framing technologies, about introducing technologies, uh, a given overview of technologies. Then we talk about more uh, about board tunnel uh, methods uh, in in a shallow condition. And then also in a in a deep condition uh, in in rock and in in soils. Then uh, we talk about challenges uh, of tunnel boring machines, uh, about uh, hydroelectric power and uh, the uh, issue of hydroelectric power and the importance uh, in uh, nowadays world, about uh, social and environmental specifics, about environmental management and initiatives from the government, initiatives from the financing institutions, then uh, how to minimize impacts, and finally about uh, strategy and conclusions. Uh, with the next slide, I would like to show you the uh, bio sketch of uh, projects. Uh, well, 
Actually, this is not the oldest project uh, in 1983. I actually started in 1961 uh, when I had been serving uh, for the hydropower project. At that time, it was the most famous one in Austria uh, by the name of Caprun. It's uh, still a project under construction. It has been, uh, it has been enlarged several times. Now, this uh, in 1983 it was uh, near to Innsbruck in the western part of Austria, a 180 megawatt uh, project uh, which has been uh, using uh, for its head raised tunnel those tunnel boring machines in an open mode machine and also conventional tunneling uh, method, CTM tunneling method, 3.6 meter diameter almost uh, six kilometers long in highly fractured rock. Then 10 years later, I've been working uh, for the World Bank on the Nan Jai Chai Yellow River Diversion Project in China, which has been a 280 megawatt project with tunnel boring machine, uh, almost 100 kilometers, several, uh, it was a total of four uh, individual, uh, but uh, connected to each other, uh, hydro tunnels with uh, five meter diameter in sandstone and less in the central part of uh, China, actually in Shaanxi province. Then in 1996, uh, I have been on a, involved in the hydroelectric power plant Dainin in Vietnam, which was a 300 megawatt uh, project with uh, a 6.8 meter diameter tunnel boring machine excavation, 11.2 kilometers in fractured granite and in schist. In 1997, only one year later, I've been involved in Hangzhou, which is a very uh, well-known city in the uh, southwestern part of, of uh, uh, China, the so-called uh, Tongbai hydroelectric power project uh, a 1200 megawatt big project uh, tunnel has been nine meter diameter tunnel boring machine uh, in granite. Then in India in 2008, I started to work for the hydroelectric power project of Rampur in Himachal Pradesh, 412 megawatt. Uh, it was a combination of uh, uh, conventional tunneling with NATM six meter diameter, uh, almost 16 kilometer uh, of uh, excavation in fractured gneiss and amphibolite. In 2009, only one year later, uh, I have been involved in a water conveyance tunnel in the Iran by the name of Kurang 2. And this was a tunnel with 4.5 meter diameter, almost 30 kilometers long in fractured limestone and schist. Uh, with uh, a combination of tunnel boring machine and conventional tunneling with NATM. In 2010, I have been involved on the LURI uh, project in Himaja Pradesh, 775 megawatt project. Uh, uh, it was considered to be driven with tunnel boring machine and conventional tunnel boring uh, NATM, nine meter diameter, 36 kilometer long, actually two tunnels, each of them 36 kilometers in uh, both sound and fractured rock. The tunnel, uh, the, the Lurie project has uh, remained as a project. It has not uh, started uh, with the uh, actual construction. In 2011, uh, 2011, I have been involved in a hydro conveyance tunnel in Iran, uh, so-called ba uh, Behesh Abad tunnel, 28 kilometers in limestone and sandstone with tunnel boring machine technology. And in 2014, we started with the construction after several years of preparation with the construction of the Vishnugar People Koti hydroelectric project in uh, India, tunnel boring machine, 8.5 meter diameter, 16 kilometer length of head raised tunnel in uh, addition to uh, tail raised tunnel also in quartzite and limestone. Next slide. Next slide uh, is uh, giving some explanation uh, in a, in a forward. 
The hydropower plants and its tunnels are often offering sustainable energy solutions for many generations to come. So hydropower is more than ever an important uh, source uh, for energy supply in the world. Energy supply worldwide is based, uh, when it's based on uh, hydropower, is covering about 5% of the worldwide demand. It is a green energy. It has to be underlined as a green energy. Uh, and in terms of, uh, in times of increasing world population, the green energy demand is more and more important. And uh, hydropower is a sustainable uh, electricity. The design is one of uh, the challenges in preparing investment and sustainable hy hydropower. So the uh, real decision on the uh, success of the project starts with the design of the project. Next slide. Next slide uh, shows you a so-called framed hydropower project. What is the frame of hydropower? The construction must reflect underlying contract conditions, which must allocate and balance the risk between parties. Nowadays, we don't have any more problems with finite elements, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, and so on. The construction contract is the key to the success of the project. Underground uh, works are predominantly featured by the method of excavation. And we have two methods, basically two methodologies or two technologies of excavation where we have to make a choice. The access uh, to the land is important to be considered as well as the land beneath the works. Uh, the uh, required investment has to be evaluated, the required time uh, for construction and the environmental impact of construction is as well a crucial component of each project. And successful complete completion needs full consideration of these features to be given before and during bidding. So when we do bidding, we have to consider all of these features. Next slide. What are the framing technologies? Uh, tunnel construction technology is an underground infrastructure passage beneath earth surface and sometimes in or beneath the water table. The methods for tunnel construction are changing. Uh, almost, almost every year we can have new technologies uh, the, the industry is very, very creative and providing new technologies and the details of these new methods need to be discussed. Tunnel construction is considered to be an expensive construction, but it saves time and provides comfort in most of the cases. So this is something which uh, has not been penetrated to the public and to the media enough, in my opinion. We still have to insist always that uh, tunnel technology and tunnel construction uh, is not only expensive, but it saves time, provides comfort, and in many cases, it uh, saves money also. For the tunnel construction, large excavation happens, and it could happen either in soil or in rock. And it is necessary uh, with the availability uh, for the availability of modern equipment, excavation and backfilling has become much easier with this modern equipment nowadays. Tunnel can be used for roadways, railways, uh, even for waterways, and therefore we talk about hydro tunnels. And for instance, in cities like Mumbai, the metro sewer network uh, is housed in tunnels. All of that is housed in tunnels. It would not be possible to do all of these uh, millions of cubic meters of uh, sewage every day to uh, have it on surface. Next slide. Uh, let's talk about the introduction of technologies. Uh, uh, even in uh, India's renewable energy mix of nowadays, Hydropower is one of the earliest, cleanest, and best accepted uh, power sources. 
Uh, it is therefore understandable that all stakeholders of the hydropower industry have significant interest and uh, also express their interest in uh, considering and evaluating and optimizing hydropower projects. Uh, corresponding efforts have resulted and are reflected in the development of best practice in design, contracting and construction of tunneling and underground works. So best practice includes both uh, careful consideration of the needs of the uh, construction time, of the construction schedule and of the quality of the works. So this is all included in the definition of best practice. For the next slide, please, uh, I would like to talk about uh, construction technologies. And as I said already, there are basically two methodologies uh, uh, in the various types of hydro tunnel technologies developed so far. And there is uh, the cut and cover method, uh, which is, uh, not the real a mining method, it is underground, but the cut and cover means that we have to make the cut. We will talk a little bit more about that later. And then we have conventional tunneling, uh, conventional tunneling both when we uh, are in, in rock, we do it with drill and blast. And uh, uh, many times we also uh, talk about the uh, new Austrian tunneling method in particular, here in the Asian countries, we talk more about new Austrian tunneling method than in the International Tunneling Association, we talk about conventional tunneling. Conventional tunneling is also using not only drill and blast, but also road headers and uh, ripper, uh, ripper tools. So it can be a different type of uh, excavation still using conventional tunneling and uh, in this conventional tunneling, uh, most of the time, we don't uh, use uh, precast concrete segments as a, a support, as a lining. We use shotcrete as a lining. We will talk more about shotcrete and uh, shotcrete specifications. And uh, uh, shotcrete specification and additives uh, to shotcrete uh, specifications. Uh, like uh, we, are, we are advancing more and more and using more and more fibers, both uh, 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 micro uh, fibers and uh, steel fibers. So mechanized tunneling method uh, can be done with tunnel boring machines, TBMs, uh, in open phase in uh, gripper shield and unshielded condition, uh, uh, TBM conditions. But we have also mechanized uh, TBMs, uh, which are using shielded conditions, and we are using also uh, face support. So we'll give you some, some indication of what uh, type of mechanized tunneling is best done. And for smaller size uh, diameters, for smaller uh, excavation diameters, we are also using uh, check piping uh, or pipe checking uh, method. Next slide. Next slide gives an, an uh, overview of the tunneling techniques. And uh, we have uh, uh, tunneling machines uh, and conventional tunneling. In this table, uh, in, in more details, we have uh, support without shield and we have shielded uh, machine support and we have uh, a conventional tunneling or mined tunneling or NATM tunneling without support and uh, with support. And then we have, from the point of view of the method, we have uh, gripper shields. Uh, we have uh, gripper shields without face support. We have gripper shields with uh, mechanical face support, with compressed air. We have gripper shield with uh, slurry, which is based, based on, on bentonite support and also with uh, EPB or earth pressure balance uh, method uh, uh, shielded machines. And uh, uh, we have other uh, types of uh, method, cut and cover and submerged tunnels, which we will uh, uh, not uh, uh, go into more details more. And, and then for all of these methods, we have principles which are described 
in this in this table. The next slide, please. Next slide gives an overview of bore tunneling method or TBM tunneling method. Uh, this is a modern uh, tunneling technology where tunnel boring machines are used with automatically work and makes the entire tunneling process easier. In an urban area, it is also quicker to use TBMs, and the, which is a good method to build tunnels, in particular in high traffic areas. Uh, there are different tunnel uh, boring machines available at different types suitable for the respective ground conditions and counter. The conditions, these machines can be used in difficult conditions such as uh, below the water table and then we need the uh, face pressure. The groundwater is a special pressurized compartment uh, in the machine provided for a tunnel boring machine to work in and below the groundwater table conditions. And we also have to talk about repair, maintenance and repair. The workers, uh, they should not enter the compartment in a tunnel boring machine where we have uh, pressure uh, in front of the face, except for repair works. But uh, care should be taken while the TBM is in working conditions the workers usually cannot enter that. There are some specific cases where the, where the workers uh, get uh, a, a, a diving suit and then they can, like in the diving conditions, go into that compartment. But this is uh, the very much uh, an exception. Next slide, please. So in the next slide, uh, we show there is uh, some, uh, yeah. That's a clear picture now. The cut and cover technology for construction is generally used to build shallow tunnels. And in this method, a trench is cut into the soil and it is covered by some support which uh, can be capable of bearing a load on it. The cutting can be done uh, with two different methods, either the bottom up methods or the top down method. In the bottom-up method, one is, uh, uh, is excavated under the surface using the ground support. And then the top-down uh, is another method uh, in which side support walls are constructed first by slurry walling method or by contagious board piling, intersecting board piling. Then the roof is located on top of the walls and the excavation is carried out underneath. And finally, the base slab is uh, cast and constructed. Next slide. The board tunnel has uh, some uh, challenges. And the two basic challenges is, first of all, the capacity. And the other challenge is the investment. So for the uh, hydropower community, it is a challenge by needs for additional capacity of the global society and of the uh, infrastructure industry in sustainable hydropower projects. Challenges uh, come from preparing the investment and procurement in sustainable hydropower, which is one of the big challenges while investors are reviewing procurement policies. So procurement is a very special task, a very specific uh, task also in uh, hydropower tunneling as it needs a full understanding of the technology, a full understanding of the contractual conditions also. A full understanding should include also a full geotechnical and geomechanical understanding of uh, that uh, specific challenge in the board uh, uh, method. Next slide. The next slide uh, just shows you uh, uh, on the left side, the TBM excavation using a machine with an open gripper. And on the right side, conventional tunneling or NATM tunneling using drill and blast uh, and top heading and bench excavation. So this is just uh, the two uh, principal technologies used in the hydro tunnel construction. Next slide. 
the specifications for hydro tunnels, uh, there are basically four, four, let's call it uh, specification families. The first is the cast in place concrete for the line for for the uh, lining and the specifications for cast in place concrete. So uh, there are lots of specifications for cast in place concrete, uh, which would be beyond the the uh, scope of this presentation. The second uh, family is the precast concrete segment lining specifications for precast concrete. Very, very uh, important uh, for the definition of a hydro tunnel project. The uh, third family is the EPDM uh, specifications for precast uh, concrete tunnel linings, in particular for the ceiling in between the two types of, of joints which we have in precast concrete. One is the uh, circular, a circumferential joint and the other one are the longitudinal joints. So the design of the uh, precast concrete segments has to take uh, spe uh, specifications and standards and the uh, regulatory frameworks from the EPDM uh, uh, specifications. And the last one is, and I will talk in, in more detail because I think it's more important, the short grid specifications, standards and, and guidelines. So let's go to the next slide. The next slide shows the guidelines uh, for the short grid on a European uh, norm standard, European standard. European standard, uh, I'm not going through all of this, but uh, just to give you an idea, and an indication if you want to look it up later into more detail. Uh, there, there is uh, the European standard for admixtures for concrete, mortar, and grout. And uh, in the part five uh, of that European standard, admixtures for sprayed concrete includes definitions, requirements, conformity, marking and labeling, and definition and specification of requirements and conformity for admixtures specifically intended for the use in sprayed concrete. The setting of the accelerating and non-alkaline set accelerating admixtures, consistence uh, control admixtures, bond improving admixtures, and so on. The next European standard is the European standard 14487.1 one for sprayed concrete consistency, Part one, definition, specifications, and conformity definition, specifications, and conformity for both dry and wet sprayed concrete. Classification related to consistence of wet mix environmental exposure classes, young, hardened, and fiber reinforced concrete requirements for constituent materials for concrete compositions and for basic mix for fresh and hardened concrete and for testing of all of these types of fiber reinforced spade concrete specifications for early strength development and so on. The next is uh, for the European standards 14487.2, spray concrete part two is the execution details on how to correctly execute concrete spraying related to application, ground strengthening, uh, uh, repair and upgrading of existing structures and for freestanding structures. Requirements for the execution of concrete spraying both by wet and dry process, applicability for temporary as well as permanent structures. Then let's go to the next uh, standard, maybe with a little bit uh, uh, related to the ASDM, which is the American standard that we have on, on this slide, we have still uh, uh, European standard and American standard for specifications of material of shot grid. So you can see, I don't repeat what, what is already written here, the ASDM standards for uh, sampling materials, standard for a method of obtaining and testing, standard for preparing and testing of, uh, of uh, 
samples, uh, standard for test methods and so on. So all this is in the uh, ASTM standard. Uh, maybe in India, the ASTM standard is better known than the European standard, why I think that the European standard gives a more detailed uh, specifications for, for short grid. And then let's go to the, to the next slide. And the next slide uh, is indicating other standards, in particular, the Austrian uh, sprayed concrete guidelines uh, in view of the Austrian uh, uh, first edition 1989 and 1992 for testing of sprayed concrete guidelines and so on. So the European Federation of National Associations is also uh, providing standards. Uh, in short, it is called the FNAC. The FNAC is the European, <coughs> European uh, specification for sprayed concrete uh, uh, of uh, short grid material, mixed design, requirement, application, quality control, and the guidelines for specifiers and contractors. Then we have also the Norwegian uh, Concrete Association. Uh, we have already also mentioned the American Concrete Institute, ACI committee and in different parts. So there are lots of standards available and specifications available after careful studying each uh, in the very specific project uh, in India for the Tunneling Association of India. I think um, it is uh, worthwhile to go into the details and then make the decision on which standard and specification should best uh, suit uh, the requirements of the specific project. Next slide, please. I want to go a little bit back also to give you a background of the history of modern tunneling. And uh, let, let me start <laughs> uh, in, in 1975, where we had a hydroelectric power project, uh, Waldeck II in Germany, where conventional energy uh, design has been used. So uh, at, at that time, <clears throat> The geomechanic know-how from that uh, sort of mountain tunneling got transferred uh, in after that 1975 event uh, in the, uh, into urban tunneling. So it was kind of a transformation from mountain tunneling into urban tunneling. The experiences with finite element calculations at that time have been done uh, in, in the university level, both in, in Germany and in France for the design of these uh, Baldeck II cavern house, uh, which have been used for the design of metro tunnels later and metro stations also uh, in soft ground to simulate ground behavior and to design sprayed concrete support. In 1978, uh, at the same time, <coughs> we had uh, TBM experience with one car, one uh, cast, one uh, pass precast concrete lining segments that had been uh, published uh, uh, and uh, the uh, early experiences have been gained uh, for the Frankfurt Metro. Uh, in uh, uh, Munich, uh, also precast single lined uh, uh, segments have been used for unified so called auto connected and double converging segments in both joint types, both uh, circumferential and longitudinal joints, which had been used the first time in, in 1978 for the Metro of Munich. The cross-section uh, extension has been expanded from uh, 120 square meter cross-section, which is quite a big cross-section. A single track tunnel uh, usually has, has uh, something in between 30 and, and uh, 40 uh, square meters. But uh, at that time, with the experience from the hydroelectric power project Valdec 2, uh, with 1,300 uh, square meter of excavation for the machine hall, it has been used for the first time uh, in, in a, a shallow soft ground conditions for the Metro Munich. Uh, and it extended from 120 square meter to 180 square meter. 
So the findings uh, from the geomechanic technology of NATM or conventional tunneling design and construction have been transferred on a global scale into TBM technology with single line precast concrete segments. So uh, we can look at this, uh, at, at that uh, 40 uh, years ago, that uh, there have been very intense discussions when it came to the evaluation and uh, to make the decision and the choice uh, between LATM, CTM tunneling, and tunnel boring machine measured, which, uh, which uh, later has been called by the International Tunneling Association, so-called mechanized tunneling. So mechanized tunneling uh, is uh, TBM tunneling and uh, LATM tunneling in, in uh, international tunneling terms has become conventional tunneling. Since then, over the last 40 years, a gradual approximation has happened between the two tunneling techniques. And this uh, has been accompanied by in situ observation and monitoring, which took place and is nowadays essential part in both of these tunneling technologies. So these tunneling technologies not anymore compete so much with, with each other, but they have their pros and cons. Uh, and it is fair to state that both tunneling techniques have been benefited from each other. The fields of competition have shifted from geomechanics towards contract, uh, towards schedule, towards cost evaluation, towards uh, geotechnical baselines and risk management with in innovation in tender document preparation. So tender documents nowadays uh, uh, are very, very far advanced compared with 40 years ago. Because of these factors, uh, contract schedule cost, uh, baselines and risk. So that is, that is what I call the inner component of the technology. Next slide. So hydroelectric power uh, remains the world's primary and most important source of renewable energy, according to the International Energy Agency, uh, IEA, and the US Energy Information Administration, or EIA. Hydropower amounted in 2012 to uh, 3.6 billion kilowatt hours worldwide and hydropower projects represented in 2013 uh, about 16% uh, of the world's total energy production. Other renewable energy sources accounted for less than 6%. So hydropower has been, and hydropower tunnels has been the most important and still has uh, the most important component of uh, renewable energy. Some people also like to call it uh, solar energy because uh, hydropower comes uh, actually from the water, which uh, comes with the rain or the snow in some countries. And uh, is from that point of view also can be uh, called a solar energy. But uh, hydropower as such, and the, the biggest uh, uh, invest, investor in, 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 hy in hydropower uh, is uh, worldwide, globally uh, considered, it is uh, the World Bank. Next slide, please. The uh, talk about uh, uh, energy and climate, you know, in the Paris Agreement of uh, Climate Change, so-called COP21, it became into force in November 2016, and it has been a landmark moment for the international community committed to collectively accelerate the transition to a clean energy economy, uh, more, more than ever actual today. The uh, SDG is the uh, uh, adoption of the United States, uh, United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development uh, Goal, 
uh, SDG means Sustainable Development Goal. And for the Sustainable Development Goal, it is also signaled and emphasized on the need for affordable, clean energy. So hydropower is the one which gives us the clean energy. Next slide. This shows hydropower projects in developing countries uh, where we have a, a capacity, at, uh, according to that slide, even if it's very difficult to, to read because it's too small, uh, that we have almost 4,000 gigawatt capacity of hydropower projects in developing countries. Today, we face greater concern for global issues. Now, uh, I have my screen is again blocked, so maybe you can, you can open it. Yes, thank you. So uh, climate change and other uncertainties are a global issue uh, of the past and of today. We are faced with water scarcity and competing uses of uh, hydropower. We have a greater environmental and social awareness nowadays of hydropower, which we have to take into consideration when we are uh, designing uh, projects. Uh, we have limited domestic consumption and often access to regional uh, markets. And the global community and connect, convict, uh, connectivity is of utmost importance, but uh, also of some concern. As we know, for instance, from the Mekong uh, River uh, concern, and that is something which goes uh, through the media nowadays. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide talks about energy development. Electricity is new, is needed, is a need uh, for human and economic development everywhere in the world. An estimated more than 400 million Indians, for instance, are without reliable access of electricity. Hopefully, this is changing and maybe has changed a little bit already because poor power supply is a severe constraint on the economy because uh, as a consequence, it has higher costs. Another consequence is the loss of competitiveness and another consequence also uh, is uh, less jobs, fewer jobs. So for the, the options of the generation of India of today, uh, now it is coal is already 80% of the actual generation, which will uh, diminish, which will minimize. We have nuclear energy, we have limited oil gas, and we have hydropower and the potential of uh, uh, undeveloped uh, hydropower nowadays is about 120,000 megawatt, basically coming from the Himalayas. And then we have other renewable energy development also. So just let me add uh, at that point uh, with regard to nuclear power plant, uh, nuclear power, uh, there is not enough consideration and not enough attention paid to the option of putting nuclear power plant, which is basically a power, which I also call a clean power, because we can uh, dispose uh, the waste of nuclear waste of the nuclear power. But number one, we should put nuclear power plants underground. This is the number one uh, requirement which we have to satisfy in the future with nuclear power plants. And we know that uh, nuclear power plants, we have a total of 450, approximately 450 nuclear power plants worldwide. So uh, we depend on nuclear power and we should not let happen Fukushima, we should not let have happen uh, uh, this type of, of uh, disasters in the world. Uh, so uh, therefore nuclear power plants have to, have to be put underground. No, from the social and environmental uh, specifics, I would like to talk uh, also a little bit about fundamental concerns. And uh, this is a fundamental concern that it was not until the late 70s and 80s that social and environmental impacts 
uh, previously, which have been treated as inevitable side effect. They are a fundamental concern, but we can make control of that nowadays. So when we talk about uh, specifics of social and environmental aspects, we also have to think about the World Bank, which has responded by adopting guidelines to integrate social and environmental concerns into the analysis of proposed projects and to avoid or mitigate the adverse consequences from large hydropower projects. Therefore, the World Bank nowadays is providing financing in uh, uh, different uh, parts of uh, India, in different parts of uh, Southeast Asia, not anymore in, in China because China became too rich, but uh, in, in many countries, Indonesia, India, and so on, uh, the, the World Bank is financing by taking into account uh, social and environmental specifications. Next slide. So uh, the World Bank uh, has issued uh, specifics and guidelines uh, on different uh, issues, in particular since 1977, on the safety of dams. Uh, in particular, also, uh, I, I may remember that uh, maybe in, in India you have realized the uh, big landslides which happened uh, three months ago on the Melanchi project uh, in Nepal, which caused uh, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, lot of disaster uh, on the Melanchi River uh, project. And uh, so dam safety is a an, is an specific issue nowadays. Uh, also resettlement, uh, there are different uh, resettlement uh, regulations uh, which have been developed in 1980, 86, 90 and 2001. Then there have been uh, issues and specifics on uh, the safeguards for indigenous people in 82 and 2005 on natural habitat in 86 and 95 environmental aspects of dams and reservoirs in 1989 and environmental assessment uh, regulations in 1991. Next slide, please. There are safeguards on public authority policies uh, and there are plus disclosure policies uh, with respect to environmental assessment, natural habitats, forests, pest management, physical cultural resources, and then piloting use of uh, country systems, uh, involuntary resettlement uh, regulations, indigenous people, safety of dams, projects involving international waterways, and projects in disputed areas. Next slide. There is a commitment from the owner side on the environment and uh, World Bank partners and owners have committed themselves to ensure that people and the environment are not harmed as a result of its financing of projects. So previously, the bank has emphasized on the term do not harm. But now the bank is promoting the so-called slogan, do good, do good with the project you implement. Better embodied social and environmental concession leads to reduction and management of risks and is also saving money and time. So we get our projects earlier than we have anticipated before with uh, promoting and doing good. Next slide. Next slide shows the environmental and social impact on flora and fauna, means uh, on, on, on the grass and uh, on the, the uh, surface uh, flowers and, and, and forests. So this impact on flora and, uh, and fauna is an, is an issue uh, which has uh, to do with the quality of the water, which we are dealing with, with the construction related impacts, with the safety of workers and communities, 
with the impact on physical and cultural resources, with uh, other induced impacts on cumulative impacts, uh, as mentioned before, on dam safety, important environmental uh, issue, on the catchment area treatment and other enhancement in that uh, uh, area uh, treatment and uh, in, in the dam side with the land acquisition and with its impact on the land and with its impact of uh, the uh, project on indigenous uh, local people. Next slide. The public authority uh, and the public owner uh, is challenged uh, from the point of view of standards embodied in public policies which have yet to be universally adopted. Even owners that accept in principle uh, generally uh, show uh, a lack of uh, relation to the regulatory framework, uh, to the participatory mechanisms, to the domestic capacities, and they need to translate the new standards into results on the ground. So this is uh, a challenge uh, which is uh, going to the address of the public authority. Okay, next slide. Underground works uh, have an impact and they need to, uh, uh, therefore they need to be spe specified in particular with regard to the impact due to the excavation. This is the heaviest impact. But uh, from the point of view of excavation, we also have to look into the impact which uh, comes along with the muck and with the disposal of the debris. Uh, there is also to be considered the impact due to the construction equipment. There's an impact uh, indoor and ambient air quality. There's an impact on the water quality and there's also impact on the health and safety of the, uh, of the uh, area. There are perceptions uh, with regard uh, to uh, the risk of damaging of uh, adjacent buildings with the regard to reduce the discharge of the resources and also with regard to a reduction in productivity due to the dust which is created when you deal with uh, excavation material. Next slide, please. There are some benefits uh, due to the slogan of the pay attention. So paying attention to the environmental and social aspects can avoid problems and can add values to the project. Uh, it can reduce unforeseen issues or unforeseen problems. It can improve relations with the local communities. It can prevent delays and stoppages it can prevent legal disputes. It can also uh, allow for a good corporate image, create a good corporate image of the construction company and of the construction site. And it also reduces the financial costs, uh, both with regard to time and with regard to money. So these pay attention issues are uh, benefiting to, to a lot of, of uh, these uh, issues. Next slide. So we have to look into uh, public supported programs. What, what kind of public supported programs uh, can we develop? We have to put a focus on countries with high potential for development of underground infrastructure. So most of the Developing countries have a high potential for the development of underground infrastructures, more than above ground. So the uh, investment financing, technical assistance on policy issues and capacity building for developers 
uh, can all be uh, interesting programs. So interesting programs can be uh, concluded from the point of view of technical and contracting programs, from the point of view of social and environmental practice, and from the point of view of communications uh, with the uh, local, regional, and uh, uh, federal uh, communities. The work with state governments on planning and regulation should become a public supported program in general. Next slide. We have uh, to look into World Bank group interventions and what kind of governmental initiatives we can develop in order to uh, achieve environmental and social sustainability. From the World Bank interventions point of view, uh, if we have a basin and uh, we look into uh, runoff river projects, for instance, then we have to develop a basin-wide digital GIS-based map of the hydropower potential. So mostly uh, we don't only have one hydropower uh, runoff river project on, on one uh, uh, river, mostly we can develop several uh, steps, several stages or several uh, sequences of uh, hydropower projects on a basin-wide uh, map of hydropower potential. Then uh, the World Bank uh, uh, has some uh, interventions with regard to the cumulative environmental impact assessment, so so-called CEIA, uh, and studies uh, for the five key river basins in the Himalaya area and integrated catchment area treatment plan for the, for instance, for the Satluj River Basin. And uh, the Satluj River Basin on the, uh, for instance, Rampua uh, hydropower plant. And then for the local area development fund to include annuities to affected communities. So that is uh, something where the World Bank has an interest. And then we have uh, government initiatives also on a basin-wide monitoring protocol development for hydro projects, including monitoring of environment and social aspects. Then uh, from the point of view of the government initiative, uh, there is uh, the suggestion to install a panel of experts for the state to oversee hydro power uh, development on particular environmental and social aspects. And then uh, and, uh, so uh, mandatory e-flow uh, downstream of structure and real-time monitoring uh, of the downstream structure. And the web disclosure of families eligible for benefit sharing uh, with the uh, GRM, with the uh, risk management. Next slide. Environmental new initiatives, environmental management initiatives. Uh, and uh, number one, there are, there are several of these uh, new initiatives. Number one is a mandatory deployment of equipment for environmental friendly construction. So uh, we should always look into, into that uh, from the latest point of view of uh, uh, carbon uh, dioxide uh, emissions and, and uh, similar uh, emissions. So uh, the initiative includes also the definition of minimum environmental impact. Uh, another initiative uh, uh, relates to videograph and measurement of nature resources falling under the project affected area. And also the insurance of structure-based survey of communities falling above tunnel alignment to be completed. The involvement of a panel of experts uh, for environmental and social to assist project preparation and uh, implementation of the project preparation. 
actual implementation, not only on paper. Number six, the involvement of third party in implementation monitoring of environmental impact assessment and the introduction of module-based courses, environmental engineers on environmental management. So special uh, module-based courses on uh, these uh, uh, specific uh, responsibilities of engineers and uh, management for environmental issues. Next slide, please. Now we always should try to minimize the impact of the project. So from uh, uh, there are uh, five different uh, issues or five different aspects to be considered. First of all, the minimal land acquisition of private land by designing double or triple story buildings in the in the colony. So that means uh, that uh, in particular, if we have uh, restrictive areas, if we don't have enough area for the development of the site of the project site installation, we have to look into uh, the request for minimum land acquisition. The next uh, uh, impact uh, to be minimized is the colony impact, uh, which is designed in such a way that nearby village population can utilize the facilities of banks, schools, dispensaries, uh, and so on, including sometimes even uh, hospitals. Then uh, the existing roads uh, should be used uh, to the maximum possible extent. Construction influenced area uh, should be minimized in order to uh, possible uh, no effect to habitation in the area. So the, the influence, uh, uh, or in, in particular negative influence uh, from the construction should be minimized. And then uh, there is a request for readjustment of project components to reduce the impact, in particular, uh, the relocation of shafts and related road links including access to the construction site. So that is always something uh, which uh, has to be specified at the very beginning of the project. Next slide, please. This slide uh, is specifically meant to address air pollution and to manage air pollution. So the sprinkling of water on unpaved roads uh, to prevent uh, fugitive emissions during vehicle movement uh, should be put into special consideration. So the development of, of dust and uh, air pollution uh, to be reduced. We have uh, uh, excavation material which moves into the crushers which are used at the quarry site to be fitted to, with cyclonic uh, scrubber to control dust generation again. So this uh, relates uh, less to the roads uh, of access, but to the crusher in the quarry area. Then uh, we have to look into uh, the management of fine aggregates after crashing, stacked and regulatory sprayed with water to reduce dust. The vehicles used in the project area are to be ensured to comply with vehicle emission norms, which uh, in particular you can imagine if you have construction sites where you use old trucks and, and uh, the emission from old trucks, both from the point of view of noise and, and dust and uh, 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 CO2 emission and so on. So that uh, is uh, in particular to be properly watched. Tunnels uh, should also be properly ventilated to disperse the dust. So in many tunnels, we uh, are spraying immediately after the uh, excavation and after the blasting detonation, we uh, spray water in order to, to, to catch the dust. In uh, labor camps, colonies and so on, uh, they should be located on the leeward side, outside impact zone, of crusher and outside impact zones of added sites. 
and uh, assisting in natural filtration process should be also followed landscaping develop small garden and green belt around perimeter of the project so in many cases uh, we uh, have uh, new slopes and these slopes are are uh, uh, covered with uh, uh, with grass and 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 with young trees in order to uh, assist the, the natural landscaping condition. Next slide. <clears throat> so after air, we talk about water pollution and management, in particular uh, with regard to the labor colony. Uh, in in every uh, project, uh, we generate uh, sewage, and uh, sewage generated shall be disposed at septic tanks, special tanks. So one community latrine shall be provided for 20 persons. So this is a rule of thumb number. The sewage from the community latrines shall be treated in aerated lagoons and settling tanks before it is released into uh, open uh, rivers or creeks. From the point of view of construction water, the effluent generated at crushers had high suspended solids. So these effluents were disposed by constructing settling tanks at crusher sites. The effluents generated in the tunnel, the groundwater and construction water, contains high suspended solids, which shall be disposed of by constructing settling tanks. So all this water has to be catched and has to be controlled so that uh, no damage uh, to the environment can happen. For the water testing of sources identified for drinking purposes shall be done uh, to monitor regular disinfections. So uh, we have to maintain uh, healthy water to the uh, laborers on the construction site. So we uh, are uh, in that uh, testing condition and have to show and have to record uh, that testing also. Next slide. There is construction equipment uh, which we have to manage properly on, on every construction site with uh, modern technologies. Uh, this construction equipment uh, should produce low noise and good working condition, properly rubricated and maintained and shall be deployed at the project. The equipment producing considerable noises shall not be operated during late hours. So sometimes uh, we just uh, cannot avoid development of, uh, of uh, noises in spite of the fact that maybe the equipment is quite uh, up to date and modern, but uh, under that condition, we should avoid noise uh, development during the night. The noise level has to be monitored of construction equipment and of construction vehicles, and they shall be conducted during construction phase, every construction phase. The base values of noise shall always be mentioned in the uh, environmental impact assessment report and noise levels shall be kept within permissible limits. The crusher shall be provided with cyclones to control the dust and continuous sprinkling of water on haul roads shall be ensured to control the dust developed uh, by the traffic to the construction site. Next slide. So we have to develop uh, uh, different strategies and in particular, give a focus on the communication strategy with the uh, local people and with the local community. We have to emphasize best practice in the beginning of the project on environmental and social aspects for, uh, uh, to plan for sustainable operation and to specify sustainable operation. I recommend institutional mechanism to coordinate and implement operations, taking into consideration 
uh, of the safety. And we also should be sharing the benefits uh, on a, a sharing mechanism uh, with uh, those uh, who are affected by the construction site. Okay, so we've come to the next slide and that is uh, contract specifics on hydropower as a summary. So the uh, innovate, what is the innovative uh, contra contract methodology? Uh, we have to orient the contract for the construction works of hydro tunnels using uh, NATM conventional tunneling and TBM mechanized tunneling technologies, considering feeding uh, conditions and features with the implementation of the geotechnical baseline report and related risk management plan. So this is maybe the most important column or pillar of modern uh, innovative uh, contract methodology that we have to always give high emphasis on geotechnical baselines and on risk management. The construction uh, has to include permanent geologic mapping of the rock mass in the cross section of the construction of the excavation and the preparation of reports with the proposal for carrying out other investigation investigation activities. A geotechnical uh, daily report may be required and should be considered in the specifications. The geological mapping of excavated area, including lithological structure determination and comparison with geological profile and geotechnical model from the geotechnical documentation of the main design, the macroscopic evaluation of the basic engineering and the geologic properties, selection of the samples for further testing. All that should be included in the specifications of the hydropower tunnel specifics. Next slide. In conclusion, Hydroenergy, uh, there is a core objective uh, for generating economic growth and development uh, in an environmental sustainable way, providing access to energy and energy security for all. Clean energy means steering to a future state that is more affordable, sustainable and secure and is a long-term endeavor with challenges for any country and with great benefit to the society. The design and construction of robust specified hydropower tunnels is a prerequisite for success of energy-depending industry and energy-depending uh, economy. The hydroelectric power energy as available is affecting job availability, national productivity, and overall quality of life, and uh, deserves our highest attention and appreciation. I think that is the last slide. And with that conclusion, I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, please let me know all of your questions, either now in the question and answering session, or if you want to go into uh, uh, more consideration and uh, think about uh, what uh, has been lectured today, I'm always uh, happy to receive your questions in writing and we'll, re and we'll write you both a response uh, to, your, to your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haral, for your vir virtual lecture on hydrotonal specifics in design and construction. May we proceed further for the question answer session? May I request to the participants for their questions or any query, please? It is always the, the, the first one who, who asked the question. And uh, maybe I, I can help a little bit uh, by raising uh, the question, you know, this was uh, specifics and specifications I have been talking, 
But there are some issues which may be of uh, higher interest uh, to the participants uh, of the lecture today, like, for instance, uh, fiber reinforced shot grid. Uh, do you have anybody in the audience uh, who has specific questions on fiber reinforced shot grid on, on either uh, uh, steel fibers or on uh, other ma macro fibers? Uh, you have somebody who may have a question in that respect. Uh, hi, in uh, I'm sorry, I'm not, are you able to hear me? My name is Garvit Sahai. Uh, nice I, to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Uh, I have recently started manufacturing polyfibers and have been uh, trying to enter into the hydropower segment which is dominated mostly by steel fiber and wire mesh. So I want to know how do I let these people know that it is better to use polyfibers because the dosage is less and uh, of course your uh, energy absorption values a little better. I would, I would uh, respond uh, as follows. I have, I have been following the development of uh, fibers in concrete and in shot grid in particular for more than 40 years. Uh, in, the, in the early days of the fiber uh, age, I would call it the fiber age, uh, a lot of uh, research work has been done on the Technical University of Bochum in Germany by Professor Meidel at that time, and you may have heard from him he wrote uh, some uh, interesting tunneling books also, and he was uh, promoting uh, steel fiber uh, in, uh, in concrete and in shot grid for, for a very long time. And it all takes uh, a very long time in, in uh, our uh, industry, in particular in the underground in industry, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, the, the life cycle of our, of our products, of our tunnels, is uh, uh, considered uh, in some countries with 100 years, in other countries 120 years. And then we have some countries where the life cycle is considered to, to be 200 years. If we look into, into old uh, ancient uh, viaducts uh, in the Roman Empire, then these viaducts are 2,000 years and older even. Uh, so we know that uh, we, have a, we have to have a very long time uh, to provide durability and to, buy, to provide uh, uh, res resilience uh, to our structures. And uh, just uh, coming uh, to the uh, fibers of today, in my opinion, uh, we have two different types of, of fibers. We have steel fibers and we have uh, polypropylene fibers, okay? And uh, we know that uh, uh, in, in, the, in competition to the fibers, you are rightly uh, saying that uh, this is welded wire fabric and uh, uh, arches and so on. Uh, so we know that uh, the, uh, the distribution of the fiber is, is a very important question. And it, it took a long time to provide a really reliable uh, distribution of fibers in the shot grid and in, in the concrete. But nowadays, I think we have uh, developed the technology that we can guarantee the uh, distribution, the reliable homogeneous distribution of, of fibers uh, in shot grid and in, in concrete. And when we talk about concrete, uh, then we also have to talk about uh, uh, precast concrete segments and the use of fibers in precast concrete segments. I think uh, in precast concrete segments, it's especially beneficial uh, to, use, to use fibers because uh, it uh, simplifies the production process. Everybody who has ever watched the uh, uh, casting of uh, precast concrete segments in a, in a factory, uh, in a circular factory, you, you have uh, uh, these uh, forms, you know, either mostly steel forms, but sometimes you have also uh, concrete forms or mixed uh, steel and concrete forms. 
it is uh, saving uh, both time and and uh, it is saving um, in my opinion money also but uh, you have done a lot of a, a lot of testing for that and uh, you have received a lot of uh, certificates for your testing which shows that uh, steel fibers and uh, uh, polypropylene fibers are can be used now when is what is the difference between the use of steel fibers and polypropylene fibers where is the criteria which is uh, really uh, a, a decision maker you know and I think fire is a decision maker in, in, in that uh, respect. I have, I have been involved in uh, 10 years, 15 years ago for the Brenner Base Tunnel and, and for the high speed train tunnels in the lower uh, in Valley in Austria, where we showed that uh, plastic fibers or broad, broad polypropylene fibers give a much uh, uh, higher. Uh, stability and security to be uh, uh, safe in in a tunnel where you where you have a fiber and and why is this because the steel fiber uh, don't burn don't cause uh, don't create holes uh, even micro fine holes but uh, when you have the the fire in the tunnel uh, and the segments uh, have the uh, polypropylene fi fiber you know then you are creating an additional uh, uh, safety factor in that tunnel and the collapse of the tunnel is uh, prevented. So that is, that is a criteria which should be taken into consideration. Of course, in, in, in hydro tunnel, you will not have the fire, <laughs> but uh, we have not only hydro tunnels, we also have railway and we have uh, uh, the Mont Blanc tunnel, you know, has been a, uh, a very, I would call it a famous fire, uh, and and uh, uh, what they are using now is uh, fibers, okay? Right. Uh, Polypropylene fibers. Okay, I I, uh, I hope I, I could respond to your question, and maybe we have. It was a beautiful yes. response. Thank you so much. My my pleasure, my real pleasure. Is there any more question? Those who want to ask, they have to mute the, the microphone. I think a few questions are there on the chat. Maybe you could no. answer. Okay, let, let me let me check the chat. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question from uh, Mr. Harinder. Is it recommended to use EPDM gasket in TBM hydro tunnels, uh, in, in precast concrete hydro tunnels, use the EP, EPDM? Yes, I would, I would say simply yes. Uh, you, can, you can use it uh, in, a, in a hydro tunnel uh, because, you know, uh, if you have precast segments, Without uh, the the gasket in the joints, the uh, tunnel is not uh, tight, so you may lose uh, water. Or uh, in in other cases, uh, you may get ingress of water also. So uh, uh, the the in a uh, TBM uh, segmental lined hydro tunnel uh, EPDM gaskets are recommended also. I I would think yes. Okay. And then we have another question here. In Himalaya hydro tunnel, where we can do very limited investigation, mainly surface geologic mapping with very limited, uh, just a moment, maybe I can, I can get the, the full text. I, I cannot get the full text right now. Can, can you move uh, your, your question a little bit up? Uh, you just have to click on see more at the end of the text. You'll be able to see the whole thing. Let, let me check where I can see more. 
So basically, he's asking, is it possible to prepare a realistic geotechnical baseline report with all the problems that people face? Yes, my answer again is yes. Uh, it is possible to prepare a reliable, comprehensive geological baseline report in the Himalayas. We have, we have done that uh, on uh, different projects, both in India and Nepal, and, and uh, even tried to implement it in, in Bhutan. So we can, we can do a, a geologic mapping uh, and reliably develop a reliable uh, uh, geotechnical baseline report, yes. Uh, the, the best thing is uh, if, you, if you have a project, uh, then you try to find out where you can find uh, in the literature or uh, in some other sources in, in geological uh, uh, institutes, uh, you can find something with, where you can prepare, uh, uh, where you can uh, use a comparison, you know. And, and then develop a reliable uh, geological baseline report. Of course, you have to put uh, this baseline report uh, on uh, uh, in situ drillings, on, on, on core recoveries, on uh, in, in situ investigation, and on laboratory testing also. But what is number one, I think, is uh, to implement the experience from existing uh, good uh, uh, and, and, and well-approved uh, uh, geotechnical baseline report and make a comparison and, and uh, go from there. Uh, So-called uh, stay on the shoulder of giants, you know? Okay. Unfortunately, I cannot. I, I cannot move that. You said you, I should go back to the... Can I ask about the basics of geotonic baseline report? Uh, yes, uh, uh, the basics of geotechnical baseline report are very well uh, assembled in, in a report uh, for the recommendation for the development of geotechnical baseline report from, from the American Society of Civil Engineers. And the author of that report is a friend of mine by the name of Randy Essex. So uh, if, if you want to, to have uh, that uh, uh, link, I think it's even in the internet. Uh, if you look, go into the internet, uh, American Society of Civil Engineers, and you, you click uh, geote geotechnical baseline report, you will find uh, the, the details. It, is in, it can be downloaded. And uh, the, the author is a guy by the name of Randall Essex, uh, called uh, by his friends called Randy X Essex, E-S-S-E-X. -S -E okay, so then, then please type a message to continue. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I just have another question. Please. Yeah, so basically I have come across a few sites where the rock classification is really, really high. Rather in terms, it is somewhere around the higher side. The rock is, is sand, basically. If somebody touches the rock, it just breaks. Uh-huh. So uh, would you recommend that somebody uh, like while they are doing a DBM, would you recommend them to use a wire mesh for a stronger reinforcement or would you recommend uh, SFRS? Well, depending on the loads, you know, and, 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 and the development of the loads. Uh, and, and this uh, depends on the size of the cross section and uh, in, important, of course, is the geology and, and uh, the assessment of the geologic uh, condition, uh, sand, sandstone, and so on, <clears throat> and, and water maybe. But uh, uh, I would, I would, uh, I can tell you, for the Metro of Mexico many years ago, 
uh, we have had uh, running sand, you know, in in the in the face, right. and we and and we did use what we we didn't have uh, fibers at that time, but we used uh, 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 welded wire fabric mats, put okay. put the mats on on the ground, and then spray the concrete uh, first uh, water glass in order to to get sort of a ceiling, and then the concrete. But nowadays, I would always say that under such condition, uh, uh, fiber reinforced short grid would be a, a benefit, would be a, an advantage. Be an advantage over the wire mesh? Yes. Over the no, wire no. mesh. Right. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can put the wire mesh uh, and uh, still put uh, the, the, the fibers in the, in the short grid on top of the wire mesh. And the, the wire mesh, must not be very strong, you know, the wire mesh in that case, again, depending on, on the size of the opening uh, and, the, and the overburden, the development of the load on, on the excavation. But uh, I would always say uh, fiber, fibers are, are an advantage. They have an advantage, all right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let, let me check, maybe we have more questions. There is the, the, the question of the limited investigation, mainly surface geologic mapping. Well, uh, this, is, uh, this is the absolute minimum. I, I would always try to do the maximum in the geotechnical investigation part of a project. I would always recommend to go for the maximum possible investigation in order to get as much as possible information. Then, because this information then you will use in the development of the geotechnical baseline report, and it will always help the project, both the owner of the project, the client, and the contractor. Both parties uh, of, of, the, of the project benefit if the information is good, you know. But uh, geologic uh, mapping only uh, looks to be not enough in, in most cases. So uh, you should as much as possible do uh, uh, also drill hole investigations and, and in situ investigation. Okay. So there's another. Can I ask about the basics of geotechnical baseline report? I, I think I responded this question. Then there's another question from polypropylene fibers from uh, Mr. Apishik uh, Kupsari. And then there is no longer has access to the chat. I think that I, I don't have more questions in, in the chat. Un unless you have more questions, so please let me know. Right. Um, I'm sorry again. <laughs> Since there are no questions, I would like to ask another one. Please. Uh, uh, see, uh, again, through my experiences, I'm seeing that uh, the polypropylene fibers are not included in the bill of quantities or in any of the tender documents of uh, especially the hydropower projects uh, in India. Yeah. So how do you suggest uh, we uh, we enter these products into the bill of quantities or the tender documents? Well, the answer is uh, through negotiations. If, it, if, if the fibers are not in the, uh, in the, in the project, in the uh, specifications or in the design, then uh, you have to start negotiation with the client where you want uh, to uh, convince the client that uh, there are significant advantages uh, with regard to the use of the fibers. And uh, I can tell you that the fibers would have died long times ago if they would not have been strong and stronger and even stronger uh, over the time of the development. <clears throat> so uh, I, I think uh, it is always uh, a, a question of negotiation. But uh, you always uh, should should try to uh, to publish uh, your knowledge about the fibers, about the, the uh, test results of the fibers with regard to 
to strength and durability and, and uh, all of these uh, parameters, uh, you, can, you can put into a documentation and then uh, uh, try to get the, the designers. And I know that the designers are uh, reluctant uh, to implement uh, new technologies and, and new uh, views uh, <clears throat> when, they, when they want to convince the client that they are conservative and they are, they are on, on, the, on the economic side always. But uh, you, you can convince and you should do that both uh, through seminars and, and through uh, online and, and real uh, sessions. Uh, we, will, we will have soon, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, COVID will be uh, something uh, soon uh, which will be in the past. We are, we are entering into a post-COVID area where we can meet again. And uh, when we meet again, uh, we have maybe more uh, ability to convince uh, clients and project owners and, and contractors and consultants also that this technology is a technology which is uh, giving benefits to everybody, you know? And, and so that, that, that's my opinion. It sounds really good coming out of your mouth the way okay. you promote the fibers, but the same thing when I talk, people just don't want to listen for some reason. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, uh, the arguments can, can be convincing and uh, uh, can be very, very difficult to, to argue against. Right, right. But of course, okay. uh, there are a lot of changes happening in India. A lot of lot of people are starting to accept it, and they've been starting to see the the benefits of fibers. There's no doubt. There's a good change happening in India. One of the one of the issues uh, is of course competition. You know, we have uh, people uh, who have uh, been manufacturing fibers for for decades. Right. And uh, uh, you're, you are from Bach Arch, uh, correct? No, no. We are from Dura Strand. Uh, it's a USA brand. Uh, the company is Nova Phil. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we are from Bajaj, sir. Hello? Yes. Yeah, yeah we are from Bajaj. Okay. I, I can hardly hear. <laughs> We are from Bajaj, Nagpur. Bajaj. Ah, you are, you are from Bajaj. Yeah. Bajaj. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. So, do we have any more questions, or the participants may write directly to us for any further questions or the query? So I guess there is no more questions. If still participants would like to ask anything from Dr. Dr. Haral, they may write directly to us. Thank you all. Thank you to all the participants Thank for you. such an interactive and enlightening question answer session. I would like to convey my special thanks to our speaker of the day, Dr. Haral Wagner, for sparing his valuable time for conducting today's virtual training program. I'm sure all the participants have benefited from his vast knowledge shared during the program. Stay safe, stay healthy. Goodbye to all. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Kun. Ma'am, we yes, sir. Can details mil sakte hain Yes, yes, sir, sure. Yes, what do you want? ID. His you email want... ID, please. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, madam, can you share the details of uh, participants? Mail and contact details? Uh, sir, can you please write an email to us? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Madam. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.
OK. 